to be perfectly honest with everyone, it's like 11.30 at night and I had meant to get this done earlier in the morning. Obviously, that didn't happen. Um, today, we're going to talk about my favorite of the DCEU, Shazam. Oh, actually, that came out better than I thought it was going to do. It's got this really cool cover that I was worried was going to get all screwy, kind of like something like that or that. But yeah, tilt it, you see Zachary Levi, and tilt it again, whatever the kid, kid Shazam is. So, it's directed by David F. Sandberg from 2019, an action comedy starring Zachary Levi as uh, Shazam, who we last saw. One second. We last saw him as Flynn Rider in Tangled. Uh, in this, he is Shazam. Asher Angle as Billy Batson, Jack Dylan Grazer as Freddy, excuse me, Grace Fulton as Mary, Marta, Mil Marta Millens as Rosa, Mark Strong as Dr. Savannah, Dijman Hunso as older Shazam, or I guess some people think he's Solomon, I just call him older Shazam. Cooper Andrews as Victor, Ian Chen as Eugene, Faith C. Herman as Darla, Caroline Palmer as Billy's mom, and Jovan Armand as Pedro. Has a respectable 90% on Rotten Tomatoes, and with a budget of $100 million, it made $366 million at the box office. That's not a lot. I mean, at least it tripled its budget. Ah, so this is obviously the most emotional story of the DCEU. Foster kid Billy longs to find his mom and family. He first finds family with Victor and Rosa, who are some a pair of foster parents, and all of his new siblings, including Freddy, who he's, he's about, if not the same age as um, Billy. At school, Freddy gets hit by two bullies in their truck. They like they, they say he hits them. It's like a light grazing. It's like a, if this is Freddy, here's the truck. It's like a, ooh, we bumped into you. Um, but he's then attacked by those bullies. Billy hits one of them in the head with the cr Freddy's crotch up. Freddy's got some spinal issues and he's got a bump in my elbow onto things. He's got a crutch that he uses to walk. Um, so Billy picks it up and just whacks one of the bullies in the head, runs off to the subway, and ends up transported to the Temple of Shazam. I don't remember what it's really called, um, but I called it the Temple of Shazam. Then he's given the powers of Shazam when it's it's like Solomon, Hercules, uh, Zeus, a bunch of others. Um, and becomes a superhero. So he gets all those powers, becomes a superhero. So he does what any 14-year-old becoming a superhero would do and makes a sex a successful YouTube account and flusses. The Fortnite move, not the dental work. He has a falling out with Freddy because the, the two start to bicker about um, what Shazam really means and who's benefiting more from Shazam. Um, and... Billy ends up finding his real mom. However, she reveals she hasn't tried finding him because she wasn't ready to be a mother. And while she doesn't say it, it just seems like she's not ready to be a mother at all. Uh, Savannah finds Billy's new family after attacking him in the city during one of, one of the best action sequences of the movie. Billy, using his powers, accidentally pops a tire on a bus, sending it crashing. Oops. Apparently that didn't spell check when I did that. He's forced to learn more superpowers and to save people from the bus as they're, you know, the bus is hanging off a bridge. The people in the back are starting to fall onto the windshield, starting to break. He gets a mattress. He thinks that's going to help. And he tries, he, the bus starts to fall. He runs underneath it, hoping to catch it. He's worried he's going to get killed, but he ends up catching it. Um... That's when Savannah shows up and challenges him. They end up fighting and crashing into uh, the mall where he gets thrown into a toy store. Billy throws a Batman toy at Savannah and we see a recreation of, of sorts 
of the piano scene from Big. Um, it's like a blink and you miss it moment, really. It ends when Billy feels outmatched and transforms back into young Billy and runs away in fear. Savannah finds Freddy and finds out where the family lives and that's where the scene ends. It's amazing. The film is filled with these amazing action sequences. Um, so Savannah goes to the house, threatens the family, yada yada yada. They get transported into the temple area of Shazam and they're trying to escape and after a funny homage to It Chapter 1, or just it for short. I didn't want to call it it because if I had said in an homage to it, you'd be like, to what? So it chapter one is just kind of the easiest way of explaining it. Um, which Jack Dylan Grazer starred in as um, Eddie, or uh, Eddie, yeah, Eddie Casper. I almost said Eddie Bauer. I'm like, who the fuck? It's like, no, that's a like a clothing franchise. And then I started to mix Bauer with. Henry Bowers from the book and the movie and Eddie and you know uh, Eddie Kasparak which if you've never read it or seen it um uh, first of all I recommend the two Andy Muschietti films it is this massive number that I have made it <laughs> that far into um I, I think I've made it Let's see, what page am I on in, chap in the book? I'm on page 15 of the book. That was months ago when I got it. Let's look at The Shining. Sorry, my lamp is on top of it. I'm reading The Shining right now, and I'm on page 20. Neato. So, Stephen King books, not too far. Oh, I also have, not that this is a Stephen King video, 1922, one of his novellas, that I'm on page three of. Uh, you can see I read very much. Uh, number one reader right here. Anyway, um, so Jack Dylan Grazer starred as Eddie Kasparak in that film, and this, the scene I'm thinking of is what this scene in, the, in Shazam pays homage to. There's a bunch of doors, and they have to find out which one gets them out, and behind each of the doors is something absolutely terrifying. Um, yeah, it's, I was thinking, I was watching it, and I'm like, this scene seems familiar. And then I was like, oh, oh, it, it chapter one, they, they do this in it. And I was like, yeah, wait, Jack Dylan Grazer, that kid looks familiar. And I looked it up and I was like, oh, because they were in the same. Um, and funny enough, he went on to play Eddie again in It Chapter 2. And uh, he didn't really look that much different. There were a lot of the stars that really grew up. Um, Finn Wolfhard was like, here's Finn in 2017 when they released the film. And in 2019, he's like my height with this long hair. It's like, that, it's insane. So, um, anywho... We'll talk about that more once we get to the It films, which I want to get done because I absolutely adore those movies. Let's move that stuff back over. Um, so anyway, they find a bunch of doors and there's something terrifying behind each door. Um, it's a very funny scene in a... It's just a very funny movie. The final battle is amazing. Billy and Savannah fight throughout the city while Darla, Mary, Eugene, Pedro, and Freddy also get the powers of Shazam, for some reason also is capitalized, I must have just been on a capital thing, um, and become heroes, um, they all have their own separate adult actors, I was gonna list them, but I'm like, what's the point, um, you can look them up, one of them is, um, Adam Brody, who, um, what was he in, he was in something, oh, I gotta look it up, because it's gonna bother me, I know it's not Adrian Brody, Adrian Brody is, like, his brother, I think. Maybe not. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, Ready or Not, he's in. That's what it was. I want to find that movie. Where is... Let's see. Maybe not. Yeah, it doesn't even list his... Maybe he's not Adrian Brody's brother. Let's look up Adrian Brody. Huh. 
Okay, no relation at all, but Adrian Brody was in Predators, and that's what I was thinking of. So anyway, um, Billy defeats Savannah by extracting Envy, one of the seven deadly sins that really, all they do throughout the movie is um, just kind of show up and scare people. But I guess Envy was inside of Savannah controlling him the whole time, but not really controlling him. It's, it's weird. It doesn't make much sense. Um, that's literally the only complaint I have about this movie. So it doesn't, it won't affect it at all. Um, yeah, but he it extracts envy from him and defeats all the seven deadly sins. So that's how it ends. And Savannah's in prison now. <laughs> so I've seen this movie a couple of times now. I won't say a bunch of times because like... Let's put it this way. I've seen, like, Iron Man a bunch of times. This one, I don't... I haven't seen as much because it's newer. It's from 2019. Um, so, as I was watching it last night, the very last scene is, uh, throughout the movie, um, what's it? Freddy wants, um, Billy to come to school as Shazam and sit with him and lunch so that the bullies will leave him alone. And that's when their falling out happens. Because Freddy wants to use Billy to get what he needs. And, um... So, there's this scene at the end where Shazam comes in. And he sits with Freddy and the other siblings. And they're, they're having lunch. And Shazam looks at Freddy and goes, Oh, I hope you don't mind. I brought a friend. And we see the the lower half of superman because obviously henry cavill didn't portray him we see the lower half of superman walking in and um everyone's like whoa it's superman and freddy has no idea he's just sitting there he's like what what guys and he looks over and he yells he's like oh! and that moment like i died laughing watching that so i i was i thoroughly enjoyed that moment so, this is what superhero movies should be, and I, I really enjoy it. Comedy mixed with family moments, mixed with action, all blended together with great pacing making, makes for a great movie. The pacing, let's just talk about that real quick. I think I threw it in at the end. I don't really know. Um, this movie is paced so well that it doesn't drag at all and it keeps you entertained um quite like the movie i talked about earlier in the week i want to say it was um wonder woman i said the same thing about so at every point in the movie that there's at least something that entertains you whether it's billy finding his mom or freddy and billy having a falling out or fights with savannah or just family moments between the group the foster kids victor and rosa they're such great parents they're like yeah you know we're pretty lax we're pretty chill but then they find out billy's having issues at school and they put their foot down um it's pretty great they didn't even lock the door you dummy you can literally push it open with your head these cats, they don't understand. He'll push the door open in a minute. Um, so it's just kind of, it's adorable. Um, the acting is absolutely wonderful. Even the teenage slash kid actors are great. It feels like they cashed in on the Stranger Things, It vibes that a lot of movies go with now, like uh, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. They do stuff like that where you have all these kid actors that are actually really likable. Um, and But they've obviously they put their own modern superhero spin on it, which I think was a great choice. Obviously, they had to do it since Shazam is always based on a little kid yelling Shazam out loud, and boom, becomes this hulking superhero. I mean, honestly, if I saw Zachary Levi walking towards me, in a buff red suit with a lightning bolt, I'd probably be a little terrified. Um, the chemistry between the cast is, all around is strong. Mark Strong, who 
played Dr. Savannah, is probably one of the better DCEU villains um, with believable intentions as he's mistreated by his father and his brother, which drives him to seek higher power. Envy. That's why Envy is inside of him, controlling him. Yeah, I didn't realize that was a thing until last night when I really started paying attention to the movie. Also, side note, I'm pretty sure last night was the first time I fully watched it. Um, a lot of the times, I actually watched this back in February. I was watching it, I was like super sick. Like, stomach tearing. It was disgusting. I, I, obviously, my stomach wasn't literally teared. But um, it felt like something was trying to burst out of me, like chest burster style. And uh, so I, I put it on and I fell asleep. Uh, not because the movie was boring, but obviously it's just like this is one of those those like soothing movies. I, I don't really know how to quite describe it where you watch it and you're like, oh, this is such a sweet moment. Oh, I, I, I love how this is going. There's nothing boring in this movie. It's just it's a nice movie to put yourself at ease. It's funny. It's action packed. It's, you know, it's got some tense moments. It's not like, like, I'm weird. I can put on Halloween and fall asleep. A lot of people can't. Um, I just tend not to. Um, one of the reasons being I don't do that is because I have the Blu-ray for it. And I don't have a digital. So if I have the Blu-ray, that means the menu comes on. You hear the theme all night long and you wake up to it. It's like, okay, that's a little eerie. This, you get some kind of upbeat, uh symphony music when you fall asleep watching it so it doesn't bother me that much um and plus just it's it's one of those you just watch it to watch it you're not trying to find anything new i happen to since i actually finished it and i gotta say this is probably one of the best if not the best dceu film i know i think i said that about wonder woman but this, this movie's stock just went up in my book. Honestly, Wonder Woman's probably number two, Birds of Prey number three, Aquaman number four. Um, but I'll actually rank them. Cat, the door is open. You guys can see that, right? You, you see, like, right... Uh, where's my finger? Right there. See? He's starting to realize the door is open. He'll bust in in a minute, I'm sure. Uh, where was I? So... Um, Savannah, while I don't know what his comic book counterpart is, or if he, let's look it up, Doctor, not Doctor Strange, Savannah. Oh, okay. Very, very similar. Oh, 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 that's so weird. Okay. So I always thought that guy was a Batman villain. I never realized he... Oh. Well, either way. So they, they just had a little picture of him from an early comic book. I always thought that was a Batman villain. Um, so, whatever. Anyway, just a really great villain. Very well acted. Um, I wouldn't say standouts. Standouts would probably be... Asher Angle or Zachary Levi. There we go. Now he gets the door open. He's not bright, I swear. I caught him earlier. Literally jumped up onto the front door screen and was just hanging there by one paw and just staring at me. I was like, why, 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 why? The Seven Deadly Sins are the film's requisite CGI monsters, and while they don't look great, they're not terrible. I mean... They're kind of there as cannon fodder towards the end, but they do do a lot of men. They, they literally bite some people's heads off and about the quarter of the way. No, no, not quarter way. Like third of the way through the film. Uh, the comedic bits are amazing. However, I fear in a few years they're going to feel dated. The flossing, definitely. Um, the YouTubing, maybe, but I, th I think the... Uh, when, he, when he's jumping around, he's flossing when they first start recording his moves. I think that's going to feel a little dated. 
the music is great. I don't think the scores are that great. They're good, but they're not that great. But the other songs they use are, um, there's a song right when it goes from what happened, like our setup for Savannah to our setup for Billy. They're, they use a song that I thought was great. So I do want to touch on the subtext of Finding Family, which I sort of talked about. Um, the idea is that you can find family in unlikely places, even if they're non-biological. And that's sort of what happens here. Well, actually, it's not sort of. It's what happens here. Billy finds family in Rosa and Victor and all of the kids in a family that accepts him and wants him there. Even if he's not ready to admit it yet, he needs them and he wants to be with them. I enjoy that. So, what am I giving this? Can you guess? I haven't given one out all week. I'm giving this a 10 out of 10 and a silver shamrock. Do not touch this movie ever. This is what DCEU should be. It's very Marvel-like, but if you notice throughout this whole thing, I never once mentioned the MCU. Until now. Which, yes, I mentioned it now, but until now. This is what Marvel... Er, this is what the DCEU should be doing. They should be making movies where you can have fun family comedies mixed with superhero, mixed with drama, and a tiny bit of horror. Uh, again, the seven deadly sins biting people's heads off. Wacky. Um, I mean, great acting. And I really can't complain about this movie. I if And I, I mentioned something earlier. I've already forgotten it. This is the one I go to. If I'm like, I don't want to watch a Marvel movie. I feel like watching, which I haven't watched a Marvel movie um, since maybe March. We had a uh, 4K TV, so the first thing I watched was Endgame, of course. Um, why wouldn't I, right? So that was the last Marvel movie I watched. I haven't watched one since. So... If I were in the mood for a superhero movie, but I don't feel like watching something Marvel related, excuse me, this is the one I go to. I love Shazam. I was very nervous about this movie, and I can say that even though I didn't see it in theaters, I wish I had. And, uh, you know, obviously Wonder Woman and Birds of Prey hold the pleasure of me saying I've seen those both in theaters. This is one I regret not going to see. Um, and I honestly, I probably could do like a top 10 movies I regret not seeing in theaters. But man, that's a lot. I can already tell you Shazam, Aquaman, and Halloween 2018 are on that list. Um, because honestly, I would have loved to just see all the like bright, vibrant colors of, um, well, I guess Infinity War would be on there too, but I don't know. But back to Aquaman real quick. I would have loved to see all those bright, vibrant colors on a massive screen. I would have loved to see this. And even Halloween 2018. I just wish I didn't wait that long to see it, even though I love it. So 10 out of 10 here. I can't complain anything about this about anything about this movie. Uh, Silver Shamrock, of course. Tomorrow, hopefully. I'm exhausted. I haven't even watched it yet. Um, so maybe we'll take a break tomorrow. I, I don't know. I... If you, if you see a video tomorrow, great. Give it a watch. Um, if you don't, it's... I'm exhausted. And it's it's now 11.43 at night. And I still have to upload this. So if this doesn't get uploaded till midnight, um, obviously, this then just count this video for Saturday and Sunday. Um, but hopefully, I'm going to watch Jason Bourne just tonight and just gonna watch it if I fall asleep I fall asleep if I don't I don't I'll type something up quick about it if I do end up doing a video for it it's gonna be quick uh if I don't I'm just gonna put it on Instagram and call it a day uh I've never seen Jason Bourne I've never really seen anything from the Bourne franchise um never something I was too interested if if I'm gonna watch a spy movie it's probably gonna be Mission Impossible 
I'm not even a huge James Bond fan, so I wasn't too heartbroken when Bond 25 was delayed a year. Um, again, Corona, don't touch Halloween kills, because I will lose my shit. And hey, 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 I just realized something. This that was probably the first time I swore in a video. That's off to me. So, um, once again, I know what... What video was it? Ah, it was like Batman v Superman or Wonder Woman I had to do at like 8.30 and I thought I was crazy. And now I'm like, I'm I'm sunburned and you can see it. Uh, my eyes are squinting because they're trying not, they're trying to stay open. Uh, my head is like, my neck is, my neck and head are pressurizing. They're like, uh, you're supposed to be at least laying down playing a game on your phone. It's like, yeah, I know. Um, so I'm going to shut up. I'm going to go to bed. Uh, I hope you guys do the same thing. Um, so again, if you don't see a video for tomorrow, check out Instagram. Maybe I post it over there. Um, that's honestly probably what's going to end up happening. I don't want to get in that habit, though, where I start reposting on Instagram and not doing videos. Um... Because I am worried that after next week when I start to do videos more than every day, or less than every day, that I'm going to fall back into that, you know, just do Instagram, it's easier, versus YouTube when I really want to get this thing going. So, this video is now 26 minutes long. Good night, everybody, and I will see you guys hopefully tomorrow, if not Monday, with E.T., but if tomorrow's Jason Bourne, so check out Instagram, maybe? Probably. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed what you just watched. If you're interested in more of my videos, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notifications every time I upload a video. And also, if you could, just leave a like down below and maybe even consider commenting and telling me things I did good, things I did bad.